you know, I haven't seen you for some time and there's, I missed you. You know, we stayed in touch a little bit on text here and there. I would check in once in a while, even after your retirement, just to yep. see what was going on. Talk about on. kids and family. Talked about kids and family. And we didn't have the pressure of talking about music because you weren't really making it. Or at least you weren't telling us you were making it. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was not in the light. I was just chilling. You were just chilling. Yeah. And um, I was conflicted. Like, why do you, why do you want to walk away? Like, why, and why do you want to tell us you want to walk away? You could just walk away and not tell us and then pick your moment when you come back. Yeah, I think... Um, I think a big part of it really just came down to like the internet, social media, perception and hip hop, like all this stuff that I didn't want to be a part of anymore. And then when I realized that none of that matters anyway, like literally Neo, like there is no spoon. Yeah. Like you can do whatever you want. I was like, oh, snap. I need to get the f- this Def Jam deal. <laughs> <laughs> Let me come back. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. But, and is that why you decided to tell us that like, hey, look, I'm walking away because fans were distraught when you said I'm not going to make music anymore and I'm retiring and I'm basically out of the game. But people who do that either do it to set up another business move or they do it to make a point. Were you making a point? I think I was making a point in my own life because I really believed it. Looking back, I was full of shit, <laughs> okay? But like right now, like, like or where, where I was, I really believed it. Like I was like, okay, like I'm out of this. But I think I was also leaving for the wrong reasons. And I think in many ways I was like trying to run away from stuff when I realized like there's nothing to run away from. I just don't have to partake in, don't have in to the engage. BS yeah. of the industry. Yeah. Um, and when I realized that, I think I was ready to kind of come back. But I'm glad that I took that time away to have my son and to be there for his first steps and his first words. And, you know, it was really, really special for me. That's the upside of running into something new and then figuring out whether the reason was valid or not. The upside is you get to focus on family and all that. The flip side is that you don't have all this distraction and all these things that are keeping you in logic and keeping you in Bobby. And then when, so when you remove all of that, you take, you take the tours and the recordings and the good and the trolling and the me interview, interview, and you have all this time. How did that feel when you suddenly had time? It was amazing. (laughs) Cause it's like, I had time to just like chill and do me for the first time. Crazy. In my life. No, it was, it was dope. I mean, mind you, I'm still was working. You know what I mean? I was doing a lot of work and, and, and recording because like, that's my therapy. Like without doing that, like I can't, I can't survive. I can't, it's like not being able to breathe if I can't write. So I was definitely doing that, but in therapy, you know, learning more about myself and how to better myself as a man, a husband, a father, like that's, that's what I was doing. (laughs) And then coming back into the music space with that learning and you've gone into this place with vinyl days that is just like reflective and warm and hungry. And it's, it's like, it's a concept record effectively. I mean, it's, sure. you know, so what is the concept, bro? It's a mixtape. <laughs> like, it's just straight hip hop. You know what I mean? It's something that I, I just kind of wanted to really, it's so funny. It almost sounds cliche. Like bring the boom bap back, like bring it back to the basics. But like, that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to rap, have fun not overthink it and do my thing. And, and I feel like I did. And I'm happy that I'm, I'm able to do that, especially at this place in my career. It's like, if I wanted to make a bunch of money, it wouldn't have been this album. And I say that because it's like, I would have just made a bunch of pop. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Mm. But I was like, I wanted to make a statement and I also wanted to end, um, you know, my relationship on this legendary label that is Def Jam with something that truly represents what Def Jam is. I can tell because this album is you just coming out and there's no apologies on this record at all. Yeah. This is like... It's kind of arrogant. Confident. Yeah. Yeah. And a little arrogant, but you stacked, you stacked yourself with people. You have a team. You built a team around this record. Not just the skits, but like... Wait till eat. you see the doc. You surround yourself with people who could help bring this project to life. And you started with the... You you picked really well as always. I mean, Egon. Oh, to bring yeah. Egon in. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess who acts as somewhat of an executive producer? Yeah, he's more like an A&R. I really executive produced it. And yeah, man, I mean, he... I call, so we did the whole album in 12 days. By the way, people who don't know, Egon is a, is a, is a, is a, 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 an incredible creative mind, tastemaker who was instrumental and remains instrumental in shepherding the legacy of the great Jay Dilla. He's the man. And I call him and I say, send me as much vinyl as you can. And he overnights me 150 vinyl. And I take what he gives me, put it on the record player feed it through the MPC, make beats right. 
How long? And just knock it out. 12 days. You yeah. did the whole thing in 12 days. Yeah, we did 14 records in five days. How can you listen to all that? I couldn't even listen to the vinyl in 12 days. I didn't listen to it all. So you were just going through and letting your instinct say, I'm going to, that sounds good. I'm going to flip that. That sounds good. I'm going to flip 100%, that. Yeah. Don't care if in 60 seconds time is a drum break to die for. That's the one I'm going to play. Yeah. The cool thing too is just like maybe three hooks on the whole album. So it's like, it's just raps. One of my favorite beats on the record is uh, Nadwa, the way you flip the oh, British, dude. British, 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 like, Columbia. Care, it's incredible yeah. the way you flip his voice and make it part of the beat and everything else. And obviously, I'm a huge fan of Nadwa, and I've actually he's you know I, I've been I've, he's, he's taught he's interviewed me as well, which was like a high point and about the only time my kids have ever been impressed with anything I've ever done. He's the best. And so so getting him on the album and paying respects to him, just just a little bit of thoughts behind that, and then we'll lean into the skits themselves because it's a full flicks of an album thank you um jj abrams what are you talking about JJ? you know what's so funny is there's also i called it okay holy shit, this is what retirement sounds like yeah i know <laughs> i called it jj abrahams because uh and we'll i'll tell you about the nardwar thing i called it jj abrahams jj was with roger lynn the creator of the mpc yep. and then he got roger lynn to write me a letter like a little note and i'm like oh my god like this dude birthed Hip hop in many ways, like why production. Is JJ Abrams hanging out with Roger I don't know. Lynn. Why what am I, why is, is logic hanging out with JJ Abrams? No, well, that's know. that makes more sense. I'm just wondering what because JJ Abrams key, is cooking up about Roger Lynn. Low key, JJ's a fire musician. Nobody knows it. Really? I'm putting him on blast Well, it makes right sense. Now. His daughter's super talented. Oh, yeah. She's he literally like he's the bomb. So Roger Lynn writes a note and says, Hey Bobby, thanks for using my instruments. And I'm like, oh my God. But he spells my name B-O-B-B-I-E, like a woman. <laughs> that, that's awesome. And I'm like, fire. I'm still framing this. And then JJ uh, mails it to me, doesn't show up. A couple weeks later, I, I hit JJ. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. And I'm like, hey, man. He's like, hey, I'm on the set of Star Wars. NBD. NBD. No, that's not how it happened. Anyway, so I was just like, hey, man, I never got that thing. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. And then he gets Roger Lynn to give me like a formal like heading from the Akai, like news head letter. And, and he writes, writes, says, hey, Bobby, um, thank you so much for, you know, using my instruments. J.J. Abrahams. <laughs> Outstanding. Was letting me know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, in the first one, you messed up my name. In the second one, you messed up his name. And I thought it would just be a fun uh, kind of behind the scenes story. As far as Nardwar goes, dude, Nardwar, I love Nardwar. Yeah. He's he's the sweetest. He cares. He's genuine. He's weird and different in a, in a great way. He's himself. But he's also incredibly professional. Oh, yeah. And the thing that Nardwar likes to put across is that it's all this this big kind of like, hey, it's all eccentric <laughs> and jokey. But but actually, he is the most researched. Yeah, dude. The most prepared. The most respectful. I don't know how he gets his information. No, he's done. I mean, neither do I. I was always sure he would contact somebody in my crew. And I remember at, after the first one, I had asked my friends. They were like, bro, we didn't say. No, I have a theory about it. I just think that I just think that he has a crew of people and they just know how to can carve up the internet. Like they're like private detectives. Like, everything is there, right? Like we think we know what the internet has. The internet is just infinite depth now because it's just learned everything there is to learn and now it's turning it into I feel like it's the closest yeah, thing to God, to an all knowing thing, or at least what we know, it's like the closest thing to that in your pocket that I could just be like, whatever. I could literally be like, movies near me. Or this or that. Anything that you could want, dream of, think of. Anything. It's kind of insane. Okay, let's focus then on uh, Bronson. Dude, yeah. He gave me one of my favorite lines. I, You know, uh, I mean, obviously I'm going through the Jumping record. Jumping out of the Hellcat. No, it's uh, 11 roses expertly engraved on the, on the side of the handle or something like that. Yeah, he's wild. He's like, he's like, my to kick you with strange feet. <laughs> like, who says that? This guy says it. You want to know how that song happened? Please. That song happened a year before it, actually. Because me and Mad Lib are doing an album called Magic. And that's in process right now. Well, we I've, we finished it. And I had done the whole Is he rapping album. on it? No. Is that I'm going to try to get him to rap on yeah, it. Yeah, well, you've literally asked him on your album. On Quasi. I know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But we did that in a weekend. And Egon sent me basically every Mad Lib beat that he's ever done. Sorry, I'm all far away from the mic. Um, I mean, gigs and gigs and gigs from like 2005. And I went through and made like my perfect album of all my favorite beats. And then I just rapped on them all. And Mad Lib comes over. This is like a year ago. Mad Lib comes over and he's like, yo, Bobby, this is crazy. And I was like, 
really? You like it? He's like, I love it. I'm like, wow. He's like, this is an amazing album. Yeah, he doesn't really sound like nah, that. That's pretty it, good. Kind of. You know, hey, it's Otis. Whatever. So <laughs> he's like, there's just one thing. And I'm like, what? He's like, I don't remember any of these samples. <laughs> oh, so good luck clearing them. Yeah, he's like, we can't clear it. I yeah, don't know what they are. And he also, was like, I was on Mushrooms 15 years ago when I made this beat. I don't know. It's not like he's, <laughs> it, it's It's not like he's, you know, you're going to be able to go on like Apple Music and find these things. and jump. It's not, it's not like they're like super funk breaks yeah, volume no. eight. No, it's like some he picked up in like Brazil. Yeah. You know, or whatever. But I was like, okay, that's fine. And so we're still working on it. I'm just going to take those dope raps and just put them on new beats that he makes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's really not that deep. And it's going to be amazing. And maybe we'll release those demos for free one day. Yeah. You know, like people can see them. But anyway, so Action was on that. And on that beat, me and Mad Lib had actually produced it together. And that was one of the samples that he... Listen to the conversation though, man. And, and like, what you're manifesting, like it's crazy. You know... You get to build this kind of world with Egon, who doesn't do that. Shit. He has his his life's work and what he what he's passionate about. He needs to like lean in with other artists and send them all that. You get to make music and produce with Madlib. I mean, th th these are the people that kind of raised you, bro. Oh, bro, come on! I got the Quaz. Yeah, I got this here. I got Dilla here. How can you not believe in magic, dude? No, seriously, it's like a dream come true. But this is the. It made me be like, oh, whoa. Like my whole career, I was scared to extend my hand to people, you know, whether it was like Kendrick. Like I've never, I don't even know how I would get in touch with Kendrick. I love Kendrick Lamar. I think he's great. Um, different people to like reach out, I would be like scared that they wouldn't reciprocate that. Once I kind of retired, I was like, well, logic, this is unimportant. Now I'm just a guy who can just be a fan of somebody. It's not some competition. So now when I reach out to people, I'm just like, it's just like, who gives a shit? So I'll be like, hey, I really like you. And they'll be like, I like you too, man. And then boom, you're friends. I'm so happy that you've drawn attention to the voices that love music, but don't make it. <laughs> because people like Flex, Nadwa, you mentioned Big Boy. There's so many Angie Martinez, there's so many... And in the UK, you know, incredible. Yeah, even fucking... Lena Waithe on this, you know, yeah. shit, having her having her do a skit. Yeah, which was awesome too. Another great skit and a really powerful message there. Yeah, but what you do, like, let's talk about, you know, the interview that I sampled with you and Earl yeah. Sweatshirt. Shout out. I think I think I might have met Earl once on like a tour, but we never like, like really met and like shook each other's hands. Like, so let me just say, Earl, I love you. Mm -hmm. For real. And thank you so much. And thank you um, to everybody at Apple for allowing me to use this sample about sampling. Yeah. And uh, I thought it was really, uh, really kind of. Thanks for using it. It was cool. Yeah, no, but it spoke to me. And that's what I mean. It's like, if you had never, if you were not you. Yeah. That wouldn't have existed. I wouldn't have been inspired. That wouldn't have, that song wouldn't have. It's just, of course, what we do. We're in the same ethos man you know you're a creative like just because you might not necessarily make music what, what does that have to do with shit? like i wouldn't be rapping if it wasn't for quentin tarantino he's a director yeah right you know this has been a really fun interview i wonder what time you're rap ready like what what's too early for you to rap oh uh, dude i'm a professional really yeah oh god you're not about to make me freestyle right now, are you? You're not to freestyle. You can, you can do something that you wrote. I don't, I don't even know what I've written. Second, I get it. What I'm spitting is the LOG. I see we out in LA for show, though. Moving to the Malibu. Me and my crew coming through to do what it do. We got plus daddy doing what we do. I'm smacking you up like Gilmore's caddy. You my fool. How it is to be your double B. Why I don't know. It's strictly off the top. The T.O.P. I said it once. I said it twice. Heat is advice. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling hella nice. I got the chain. I'm feeling deranged. They like, man, Logic ain't saying anything. I could give a Fuck, this is what that shit, that rap shit was brought up on That Brooklyn in the park after dark type When I write shit, but I don't This is how we gotta get it Yeah, you want it, but you won't with me And that's it, I'm just having fun I don't know, suck <laughs>